The Palace of Eternity by Bob Shaw. So this book was copyright 1969, and this is the first Bob Shaw novel that I've read. And I've got an Ace Science Fiction special here, and this has artwork by Leo and Diane Dillon. And a while back I watched Richard at Vintage SF review this book, and I'll post that down in the description as well, but really got me interested in the book. And then shortly after that I found a copy of it, and it's been on my TBR since then, and I finally got a chance to read it, and I'm really glad I did because I absolutely love this book. It took some familiar ideas in the first half of the book, turned them on their head, very unpredictable, very imaginative, and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was about 220 pages, and like I said, it's kind of split up between two halves. You have the first half of the book, you have a short interlude, and then you have the final act in the book. Now let's just get right into the plot of this book. So like I said, when you start off reading this book, some of it might sound pretty familiar. I've read some books recently that have this same kind of premise. And we're on a we're in the distant future on a distant world that humanity is spread out throughout the galaxy and they've kind of colonized this world and it's sort of pacifist. It's full of a lot of artists. They kind of just are out there on the outskirts of the galaxy doing their own thing. And we have our main character, Mac, and he was like an ex-military guy, and he's kind of just been working some jobs and, and just kind of hanging out on this planet, enjoying life. And in the beginning of the book, he's looking up because he knows there's going to be this event that happens. And he looks out in the distance in a certain spot in the sky, and he sees this flash because he knew that this star that was seven light years away was going to go supernova. And then you come to find out that humans had made this star go supernova. And it has something to do with intergalactic transportation on these ram scoop ships. And if you don't know what ram scoop ships are, they're a real theoretical idea of how we could travel great distances at some very high velocities through space and it's there are these ships that have these giant scoops and they're collecting the little tiny bits of matter that are in through intergalactic space and using them as their reaction mass to power the ship. So we're on this planet and we come to find out also that there's an alien race that humanity has been battling for a long time. And it's a very imaginative race that Bob Shaw describes here. And one of the most interesting things about them is that there's never been any communication between the humans and this, these aliens. There's never been any, you know, direct communication. There's never been a alien that was captured and interrogated. And as far as I know, there's never been any humans captured by the aliens. There's just this, this war going on, and the humans don't really know why, but they're just defending themselves at this point. And it seems like this planet is going to be used as an intermediary kind of base as the humans are staging this war against these aliens. And our main character, Mac, he's, he's been on this planet and he's gotten involved with uh, the, a family, very powerful family on this planet that's kind of the head of the political faction that, that runs the planet. And, and he's been kind of involved with the main guy's daughter. And it's kind of been a casual thing or whatnot, but it, that's kind of the setup in the beginning of the book. And you're introduced to these characters and... This lady, she also has a cousin that is introduced when she's, I think, about three years old. She's a very interesting child, and she has some unique kind of mental abilities. And so the first half of the book is really just going over this, setting up this whole scene. Very familiar idea. And what happens is, as the military starts staging onto this planet... One of the main military leaders kind of gets involved with this, um, this woman who 
is a powerful head of this family. And our main character, Mac, he was involved with this lady, but he's, he's like, you know, it's, I really didn't pursue it as, as hard as I should have. And it makes sense that this military leader is kind of unifying uh, an allegiance with the uh, leaders of this world. So it all kind of makes sense. He's not very happy about it, but that's kind of what starts happening. And he's, our main character, Mac, starts kind of siding with some people that aren't very happy that this is happening and they're going to try to, you know, maybe do something about uh, the military bringing a war to their peaceful planet. So that's the first half of the book. And as you get to the end of this, the first half, some, some major things happen that kind of leave you scratching your head thinking like, where is Bob Shaw going to take us here? So then there's this interlude, like I talked about. It's a very short, maybe two chapters, and it changes the whole game of the book in a very unique way. It lets the book continue on when you really weren't sure it would, but it lets it continue on in a unique way. And then the second half of the book kind of takes you places you didn't expect and at the same time re resolves all of these plot lines that are going on, like... Why did the humans blow up this star? How does it have to do with their transportation with these ram scoop ships? What is, why are these aliens attacking the humans? What's the ultimate demise of the aliens? And what's the ultimate demise of our humans and our characters that are on this planet? So all of that gets re resolved in a really unique, interesting way. And it was just a blast to read this book. <clears throat> As much as I liked the first half of the book, there was not much to fault with it. The second half of the book is where this this novel really shined for me. And it's why I highly recommend this to anybody that's that's got their toes wet into some science fiction. I probably wouldn't start your science fiction journey with a book like this because there is some complicated ideas and plot threads and... It'll make you stop and think many times, but this is this is the type of science fiction that I love. It's thought promote provoking, it's unpredictable, and it just did everything that it set out to do in just in a great way. So as far as the pros for this book, I think Bob Shaw's writing is great. He was able to describe the characters and the world building of the planet and the aliens really well in a book that was only 220 pages long. The plot of the book was good. It was predictable in the beginning, and I thought I knew what I was getting into, but the way he changes gears in this book, I almost think he set up kind of a, a, a basic plot or an idea almost to throw the reader off because I felt like I knew where this book was going. And boy, did he throw me a curveball on this one. So all in all, the book was great. When it, when it comes to cons, I can't really think of too many, except the beginning of the book was, you know, a little on the slower side, a little familiar, like I said, but just keep going and Bob Shaw will surprise you and you'll have blast with this book. So like I said, check this one out if you see a copy of this one pick it up. I think you'll love it. If you watch my channel, if you like any of the other books that I've recommended, you'll love this one too. And next up, I'm reading The Dragon Masters by Jack Vance. So just keep an eye out for that video review coming out next. And once again, thanks for watching.